So I wanted to go into robotics primarily um, at middle school. So uh, I was influenced by TV and action heroes and science fiction. And when I was in middle school, I saw this one show called The Bionic Woman. And I wanted to build a bionic woman. So in order to do that, I had to be a scientist, had to be an engineer. Uh, so that was my goal in life, was to build a bionic woman. And that was my original influence in terms of joining the, the scientific ranks. I don't call myself a scientist. I, I describe myself as, you know, I'm, I'm trained, I'm an engineer by training, but a scientist at, at heart. <laughs> so because I say that because I'm just naturally curious. And, you know, when I was 10, I had my own little lab and I used to uh, do all these experiments and take things apart. And, um, you know, my parents described it that he's doing konkaka, which is onomatopoeia. It's the sound that you make with a hammer, right? So they would say he's doing his konkaka. I just, you know, uh, enjoyed figuring stuff out and, and um, you know, kind of uh, autodidact, self-taught, so forth, because I really... This is why I say I'm a scientist at heart. I wanted to really understand the fundamental reason for what was going on. I grew up in a, um, an area in the British Isles in the Lake District. Uh, it was a wonderful area for a child to grow up in because it was an area where there were lots of fossils. It um, had a lot of unusual plants. Um, it was an area of limestone with a lot of unusual plants. and. Um, also, um, my mother particularly um, was very interested in biology. She wasn't a biologist, but she knew a lot and she stimulated me a lot. Um, so I knew from the very beginning that that's what I was most interested in. And then my father was a medical doctor and I remember him impressing me very early on. He talked about the, how well, in his, every human was different, but I also could see that every, in all the species I was looking at, that there was terrific variation. So very early on, I was interested in why was there so much variation? What was it in maintaining it? And this led into my interest in genetics, which then led into the interest of um, how did speciation occur? My interest in biology started very, very early um, as a little boy catching butterflies and looking at birds and so forth. And that continued all the way through teens and up into undergraduate times. But I didn't know I was going to become a professional biologist until I started graduate work. And I assisted in my first year a teacher teaching in the laboratory and um, I thought, my goodness, there's uh, teaching that can be done in association with research that I was about to embark on, and there's a career for that, and they pay you for it? <laughs> That's for me. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I become a scientist? Actually, after high school, I, had just, I wasn't necessarily going to go to college. Um, so I was working for a, a whole number of years uh, at a lot of different odd jobs. And I found myself working for a seismology company in Montana. And I got to talking to the geologists, the real geologists on site. And um, that's what got me interested in geology. And I also knew, and this isn't the most noble motivation, that they were making a lot of money and I wasn't. And so I decided, okay, I need to go back to university or go to university and uh, learn something and become an oil geologist and make a pile of money. Um, of course, once I got to university, I discovered that I wasn't interested in that at all, but I was interested in igneous rocks and, and the deep earth. And uh, uh, so my career took a different path than what I expected. 